We can also modulate using the sequencer. If you click on it, you'll see that it resembles the arpeggiator very closely. In fact, it's identical at first glance. And it does the same kind of things. It modulates a sound via a step sequence. But it's not as advanced as the arpeggiator. All we need to do here is to understand how to use the sequencer as a modulator. So how do we apply that to a sound source? I've loaded up a basic saw wave. And you'll see that when I hit the key, the sequencer moves along each step in accordance with me pressing a key. But it's not actually assigned to anything, so I'm going to do that now. Let's go into my source page. I'm going to choose the source filter cutoff as my parameter because you can hear it easily. I'm going to turn the modulator on and I'm going to select sequencer 1. That's now modulating, but the filter isn't turned on, so we need to turn it on and bring the cutoff down. And I'm going to add a little bit of resonance and drive to make it bite a bit more. Okay, that's a bit dull though. We can use some of these controls here to adjust the quality of the sequence sound. So add some swing, maybe take some attack off so it doesn't sound quite as sharp, and add some release which will remove that click. The gate makes the sound more staccato or more open. And you can change the rate of the sequence, so if I choose eighth notes, we get this kind of a pattern. And if I choose something really long, like one bar, it will take a bar to move from one step to the next. As with everything in alchemy, there's a whole bunch of presets, so we can try one of those and maybe eliminate all the even steps. Or we could, let's clear that completely, we could draw our own pattern. I've got the value snap set to off at the moment, which means I can apply freehand values to each of these steps. But if I set the snap to 4, that gives me just 4 positions to work with. Remember, when you're using a filter as a modulation source, the orange line indicates how much of the sound spectrum the modulator can work with. The more it contracts, the less available frequency spectrum that you have to work with, and vice versa. So that's some cool rhythmic stuff we can do with the sequencer. But what if we wanted to, say, emulate a modulated 303 acid bass line? Well, we can do that. The first thing I'm going to do is select pitch data. So I'll go to course tune. The modulation source is looking at course tune. So I need to turn the target on and then I'm going to select sequencer 2. Now the value snap is turned off. But if we select, for example, 12th notes, that gives me 12 positions in the step. And that, of course, corresponds to the pitches in an octave. Now on the sequencer itself, I can turn the depth down. The value is pitch data, so the depth is expressed in semitones. I'll set it to 12 semitones. So we have an octave of pitch to work with on the course tune. So now if I select some various step data, say 2, go for some more random ones. Just randomize it. Let's hear how that sounds. That's kind of cool. Go to the global section and we start to filter. Add resonance. A little drive. We can change the attack. Release. 
Add some swing. Cool. Now remember, of course, that because you're not using note data to create arpeggiated patterns as you would with the arpeggiator, you can play chords and they will all be affected in the same way. Fun stuff, especially if you reduce the length of the looped pattern as well. You can get some really fun stuff going on. If we head back to source A and go to our cutoff, and we can see that that one is still working its way through, you can tie steps together, just like in the arpeggiator, incidentally. So if I tie some steps here and then hear how that sounds. It behaves just like the arpeggiator. You can tie those steps together, which gives you lots of room for very creative editing possibilities. One other thing, if you have the trigger button selected, it will reset the pattern every time you strike a new note. If you turn it off and play the note, you'll see that the pattern moves through regardless of which note that I'm pressing on the keyboard. But if I turn trigger on, sorry, timing is not my strong suite today, but it resets the trigger pattern every time you press a new note, chord or event. Cool stuff. That's how you use the sequencer as a modulation source in alchemy.